as a society and culture, we're led to believe that you have to be in a do or die situation where you're backed up against the wall. Something like Cortez back in history, when literally he burned his ships because the only place to go was forward. That's the society we live in today. They believe you have to be in these extreme situations. But what I'm actually here to showcase to you guys is you don't have to be. You can condition your mind, your body, through constant repetition to access this peak state of mind. If you understood the power of your thoughts, none of you would think a negative thought again. Mark my words. And a gentleman with one leg was asked, how are you so positive with one leg? His response, how are you so negative with two? The way to get over any type of fear comes back to constant repetition. It's a mind state. It's a flip. But it's one of those things people, I practice this one or, one or two days, it doesn't take that. It's constant repetition to keep continually practicing that to crack yourself into that peak state of mind. So the first thing, I have people come up to me, Connor, well, I'm scared if I fail. What if I to apply to that university or what if I open that company, build an event that's bigger than anything else? What if I fail? My common response, what if you succeed? It's like, well, no, no, but there's all these other variables. I say, yeah, but there's also other variables on the other side. It's that mental state, trying that once. And then using that trigger multiple times, well, what if I succeed? Taking one step at a time, not taking on the whole project. Let's say you want to build- Let's take mathematics. Let's say for two weeks to a month straight, every single day I'm getting fired up for math. Math. I'm just, I'm putting my whole body language into it. I'm engaging my whole body with math. Every time I think about it, I'm getting excited. Even though I hate it, I can't stand it. What do you think is going to happen after the two weeks to a month? It's close. What's going to happen is because you've conditioned, i.e. programmed your body through constant repetition, engaging it, all of a sudden the next time you think about math, you've been doing it for two weeks, you've been jacking yourself up, next time you think about math, bang, you're going to access that peak state of mind. So the reason I'm here, I want to articulate something. I like talking a lot about the philosophy of making decisions, using your brain, all these other things, because the basis of our lives is defined like this. Most people are focusing way too much on your external environment. They think, oh, this is going to happen in the environment. There's an earthquake. Somebody's going to die. Something's going to happen. What I focus on primarily is the internal factors, your attitude, your mindset, your perception on things. Those are the things you can control. Too many people focus on things they can't control. So what I'm going to show you for a second is every single decision you make as an individual is a reflection of two things, pain and pleasure. The reason they give you so many goals it's because you need to have a target, like anything. Because if you're aiming just into the wall, you're like, I don't even have a target. You don't really know what you're doing. You don't really get excited for it. This is my goal card. This has my top five things I want to accomplish within the next five years. And on the flip side, this has what I'm gonna accomplish within the next little while. The super important things to myself. Because you guys are all students. And being, like I said, you have access to your phones. What's happening is, your attention's going everywhere. You're like, oh, okay, I've seen this, oh, there's this video. Look at that cat right there, oh my God. Your attention is going everywhere. And the more focused, i.e. specific you're going to get, the more you know, literally, it's not like one day, I'm going to be a doctor. The next day, you're like, I'm going to be a teacher. You kind of get focused on a general idea that's giving you the pull. Remember, it's pulling you. And then write that down. Have that down so that all of a sudden you're focused on that. And that's how you're going to be enable yourself to pull ahead from people. I'm an Ivy League school, but I can't afford it. I can't afford $50,000 to go and put myself in a massive debt. I look at a lot of those students and I say, well, okay, the first thing is obviously, let's say you don't get in. I say it's not a matter of getting in, it's a matter of when you're going to get in, but you're like, I don't have the money for that. I can't afford it. So I tell them, I said, well, why don't you start building an even bigger, more extensive network online that's even more powerful than going to an Ivy League school? And they're like, what do you mean? Well, you're not going to have the connections. I said, you go on LinkedIn right now and check out LinkedIn, find all your top CEOs. Let's say I message 100 of those CEOs, maybe one answers. It's a numbers game. You just keep building it from there. So that's why my philosophy is this. You don't have to be a doctor to be credible. Have doctors endorse you. To start this off, we are entering into a time of mass disruption within our political economy, within our everyday society, within our culture. And the thing is that we have access to some of the most advanced technology and innovation the world's ever seen. But here's the thing, guys. Google is not going to solve all your problems. Seriously, I hate to break that to you. 